Today, we're going to talk about how to complain in a coffee shop. We're not. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the scenario that you sometimes find yourself in, where you get served a cup of coffee that you think is bad, and you ask yourself the question, should I say something? Now, the fact that this video exists probably freaks out a few cafe owners, a few baristas. Don't worry. Two things to reassure them. I would say that 95% of the time, honestly, don't say something. And I'll explain why, and I'll explain when that 5% is, and when it's worth going and having a bit of an awkward conversation. And I'll also say, throughout this whole thing, probably over and over, be a good human. That's, that's really important. So the way this is going to work is we're going to address a couple of different kind of problem cups of coffee, and then go through the kind of various scenarios you might find yourself in to help you understand what kind of a decision you should make. So let's start with, you are served a cup of bad tasting coffee. And right from the start, we've got to get into, well, what is bad to you? Because that's really going to help you assess the situation that you're in. Because there's three scenarios in which you could be served a disappointing or unpleasant cup of coffee. Scenario one, it's a really good coffee shop, but they're having an off day, an off moment with this one particular drink. Scenario two, you could be in a really good coffee shop who just serve a totally different style of espresso than you enjoy. Or scenario three, the cafe just isn't very good at making coffee. Start to finish, they're not skilled, they're not passionate, it's just not a good cafe. Those are our three scenarios, and we've got to sort of treat each one a little bit differently. So let's go for scenario number one. So scenario one, the coffee shop is having an off day. Your one espresso, your one filter coffee has somehow gone a little bit sideways and tastes bad. This is the scenario in which you should say something. Now, what's important here is that you know the coffee shop can make good coffee because you might be a regular and you've drunk a plenty of coffee there, right? You know that you and the cafe, you and the baristas have a kind of shared idea of what good coffee tastes like. And in this situation, uh, you can go and say something, and I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but I would definitely open with, hey, the coffee here is usually really great. I really like the espresso, but this one shot just tastes a little funny. You can tell them a little bit about how it tastes funny, but you just say, I just wanted to let you know because it's just not quite right today. And in that situation, I think it diffuses a lot of tension. The barista knows that you like what they do most of the time, and you've got a shared idea of what good is. I think any cafe that cares about its coffee would want the opportunity to fix their mistake and make you another drink. So let's talk about scenario number two, which I think is actually a really common scenario out there in the world. And that's the situation where the style of coffee served by a coffee shop just doesn't sort of line up with the style of coffee that you prefer to drink. I think specialty coffee had a lot of this issue, and it leads to one of the most awkward exchanges that you can have uh, in that you'll go up and you'll say, excuse me, my espresso is just really sour, let's say. You like darker roast, they're serving a lighter roast you think the espresso tastes sour, the barista's going to hear under-extracted, oh, I messed the shot up, they're going to make the shot again, and chances are, serve you exactly the same drink. Sometimes it's difficult to say a coffee is objectively bad. I guess it can be done if you're kind of nerdy enough, but most of the time it's simply really not to your tastes, which is a different thing. Now, in this situation, you could maybe give that cafe one more go if you really want to like the coffee from that place, but chances are that is what they do. That's the style that they serve, and that one drink is just a cost of living, a cost of experimentation, a cost of trying new places. Just jump online, do a little search, find a different place to check out the next time. Speaking of which, that brings me very neatly to a short ad from this video's sponsor, which is Surfshark. Now, in the past, connecting to public Wi-Fi in, say, a cafe could be a little bit sketchy, and actually having a VPN was really useful to give yourself real security and privacy while online. And while the internet has changed and security has changed, it still offers you a great way to add that extra layer of security and privacy. Now, Surfshark is a super fast, easy to use VPN service that allows you to use unlimited devices with a single account. And there's so much more now that you can do with a VPN. In particular, you can unlock geo-restricted content. So if you're paying for a streaming service, you want to get the most out of it, well, using VPN will allow you to access content that isn't available where you live, but is available in other places. It kind of really unlocks the full potential of the streaming service. Surfshark have an app for every platform. So whether you're iOS or Android, Mac, PC, or Linux, you are covered. More than that, there's a strict no logs policy, there's 24-7 customer support, and if you click the link in the description, you can get more info and 83% off and three months extra for free with the code James Hoffman. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. So now for scenario three, the coffee shop that's just not very good at making coffee, because this one also actually crops up a lot online. 
because if you're a little bit into your espresso, you learn how to make good espresso at home, then you begin to see the way that coffee shops make coffee differently. You begin to sort of see the shots running fast and not in a kind of turbo shot way. You begin to see dirty porta filters or incorrectly set grinders or bad tamping technique and you think, with a little help, maybe they could be good. Because for many people, this might be the only independent coffee shop in their town, in their area that's nearby. They want to like it, they want to spend time there because they like the cafe, but the coffee just sucks. And the question is, how do I broach the subject? How do I say to the baristas, hey, can I give you a few tips and tricks on pulling espresso? Can I help you make me better coffee? And the truth of the situation is, you can't. You cannot help that business, because the problem that you really need to solve is so much deeper than just the surface level of the coffee doesn't taste very good. I wish that somehow there was another way, but, but this is the truth of it. You simply cannot, from the outside, push in good coffee. Even if you knew the owner, I think chances are that it would be very difficult to fundamentally change the coffee that that coffee shop serves. And that's not the best news, but if you like the space, just go and drink something else. Enjoy being in a space that isn't home or isn't work, uh, and just hang out, have a tea, a soft drink, a piece of cake, but maybe not coffee. So in that situation, unless it is truly, truly vile and you want your money back, which will ultimately end your relationship with that coffee shop, then I probably wouldn't say anything and I would just drink something else the next time that I was in. This is kind of it. I'll go back to the beginning and say, what you want is good coffee. You have to understand, is it even available where I am? And if it is, then it's worth saying something, and if it's not, then it really, really isn't. Now, there's one more situation that will kind of come up, which is you are actively asked for your feedback while you're having coffee there. And I would say the same rules still apply, in that I wouldn't really say something most of the time, but if it was truly, truly bad, then yes, I, I, I might give some very broad kind of feedback and be like, I didn't really enjoy the coffee that much, it wasn't really to my tastes, I would not get into trying to diagnose why, or, or be like, this, you know, it was under-extracted, or your machine needs a bit of cleaning. S stay away from that. Because, really, it's not going to improve your day, it's not going to improve their day. If you're giving them information that they can't meaningfully act on, it's a little bit of a waste of your time and theirs too. And it just leads to a little bit more awkwardness, which is something I would like to avoid. Now, let's talk about the other big issue that coffee shops have, or customers have, and that's temperature. Now, this one I don't think is too complicated. We're going to split drinks in half, and we'll have black coffee drinks and, and milk or, or dairy alternative drinks. If you have an under-temperature black coffee drink, please let them know. Chances are it's going to be like a batch brew, it's the bottom of the batch, it's sat around too long, it's just old. You should absolutely send that back, and it's easier to say uh, it's just a bit cold than, you know, it's a bit oxidized and gross. So just go with that. Just say, this coffee is a little bit cold, could I get a fresh one, please? No one should feel bad about that or stressed about that. Now, dairy drinks are a little bit different, because milk, particularly dairy milk, has this kind of hard stop at 70 degrees Celsius. If you heat it past that point, then you change its texture and you notably change its flavour. It tastes kind of cooked, and it simply doesn't go that well with coffee. For that reason, most coffee shops don't really want to heat the milk past 65 degrees Celsius, and once that's poured in the cup and delivered to your table, it's still hot to drink and enjoy straight away, but it's not really, really hot. And if you are distracted, if you're, let's say, having a conversation with someone, doing a little work, five minutes could pass by, and in that case, yes, that coffee will taste disappointingly cool. The problem here is that that's your fault. And if you complain, you're asking them to fix your mistake. Look, there are many, many coffee shops in the world who just want you to leave happy. It's important, it's kind of the function of a coffee shop, is to make you a little bit happier. And so if you're really nice about it, if you have a relationship with the coffee shop, chances are, from time to time, they'll just make you a fresh one, and it'll be cool, and it'll be okay. But remember, lots of children drop their ice creams, but the ones that throw a tantrum about it are not the ones that necessarily get the free replacement from the ice cream seller. Be a good human. Understand that you're asking for their generosity, but it's your mistake that we're trying to fix here. That isn't to say that sometimes drinks don't go out at the right temperature. Mistakes do happen, and I think if it is just straight cold going out or very lukewarm the minute you get it, it's okay to say something and ask for it to be remade if you want to linger over and enjoy it, but just don't let it sit around. It's good, fresh, delicious coffee. Enjoy it as quickly as you can for the best possible experience. So that's my advice. And I hope it appears more as like a guide or a framework for having those occasional slightly awkward conversations. You know, I, I just want everyone to get what they want, everyone to be happy. The cafe is happy and the customer is happy. 
But now I want to hear from you. Down in the comments below, let me know which scenario we maybe missed out on. Do you have a, a question about how you might give a little bit of feedback? Leave it down in the comments below and as a community, maybe we can give you some guidance or some answers and learn a little. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.